Hey guys, I'm Dr. Gonzalez and today in this video we are going to talk about the following topics. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like and share because in that way you will never miss a new video when I post it every single week. All right, let's get started. The vertebral column consists of 24 vertebrae including the cervical vertebrae the thoracic vertebrae and the lumbar vertebrae and it also consists of the sacrum and the coccyx and the spinal cord will pass from the foramen magnum to the vertebral canal within the spinal uh, vertebral column we will have seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, five fused vertebrae on the sacrum, and three to four fused vertebrae on the coccyx. Because of these numbers, sometimes could be difficult, I always tell my students that at 7 a.m., you have breakfast, so seven cervical vertebrae. At 12 p.m., you have lunch, so 12 thoracic vertebrae. And at 5 p.m., you have dinner, so five lumbar. And this 5 p.m., you can use it for the five fuse on the sacrum. Or if you like to have like an early dinner, then it'll be like 4 p.m. for the four fused vertebrae on the coccyx. Now notice how the spine is not a straight line, right? It's not gonna be a straight line. There are some curvatures. For example, we have this thoracic curvature, which is given by fetal position, as well as this sacral curvature, which is also given by fetal position. Now, when we start lear uh, learning how to walk, we develop these other curvatures like the cervical curvature and we adapt with this one the lumbar curvature this would be the cervical vertebrae so this is cervical one two three four five six and seven and you see that the first two actually are called atlas and axis right so the first se seven cervical vertebrae then we have 12 thoracic, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 thoracic, and then the last 5 lumbar, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now in this view we are going to talk about the cervical spine, and remember the first two verte vertebrae are atlas, and axis so atlas is this first one right here it's articulating with the occipital bone and if we isolate atlas you can see it looks entirely like a circle in this picture you can see atlas and axis this one's atlas this one's axis in atlas remember is c1 so this is gonna be anterior and this is gonna be posterior. This posterior view shows you the posterior tubercle and it's notice it's not called a spinous process. There's also gonna be a posterior arch. There's also gonna be transverse processes and anteriorly there's gonna be an anterior tubercle. Now over the transverse processes this vertebrae is gonna have the transverse foramens on each side. And medially, there's gonna be a vertebral foramen for the passage of the spinal cord. Now on C2, notice that this also is a very different vertebrae in comparison to the rest of the vertebrae of our body. And notice how this is gonna be the posterior side and this is gonna be anterior. I know it because posteriorly, this is where we start observing the spinous processes. So C2 is going to have a spinous processes in comparison to C1. And you can observe the lamina, you can observe the transverse processes, 
and a pedicle and posteriorly you can see the body that also has another structure that we call the dense which is this structure right here and of course it's going to have the vertebral foramen and other structures like these facets like the superior articular facet for articulation with um, atlas the cervical vertebrae looks quite smaller in comparison to the thoracic vertebrae. However, we, we can find some common ground, like for example, the body of a vertebrae, they possess transverse processes, they also possess a vertebral foramen, which is this hole in the middle for the passage of the spinal cord, they also possess a lamina, and they have a spinous processes. However, there are some slight differences in comparison to the thoracic vertebrae. For example, instead of being an elongated spinous process, we call it a bif bifid spinous processes. Also, if you notice on the area where we have the transverse processes, there's also going to be a foramen. We call it the transverse foramen. And this one is for the passage of a specific artery. So if you notice, most posteriorly, we have this process right here called the spinous processes in light blue. Then laterally, we have these transverse processes and these transverse processes will articulate with the ribs. Connecting the transverse processes with the spinous processes we have this area called the lamina and then anteriorly we have the body of the vertebrae in light blue like i said it's the most anterior structure notice how thick it is in comparison with the other uh, body landmarks and the landmarks of the of the vertebrae and connecting the body of the vertebrae with the uh, transverse processes, we have the pedicles here shown on li in light blue. Lastly, we all have a, a vertebral foramen, right? All of your vertebrates will have a vertebral foramen, which is a foramen or a hole through which the, spin the spinal cord will pass. So notice how, for example, the body of the lumbar vertebrae, it's actually thicker as well as the body of the vertebrae. But regarding the spinous process, you can see how it is more square rather than straight pointy uh, spinous processes. In the sacrum, you can observe how this is an anterior view and this is a posterior view. In the anterior view, this is called the body in light blue and it also has we find several foramens uh, this one it's called the first or anterior sacral foramen you have the second sacral foramen third and fourth um, sacral foramen inferiorly you can see that the sacrum has an apex and superiorly, this area in light blue, it's called the promontory. And this area right here, it's part of the body. Now, posteriorly, notice how uh, the sacrum has a spinous tubercle. And the median crest in light blue. And these foramens, now we call them the posterior or dorsal sacrum foramen. So this one's going to be the first posterior sacral foramina, second, thir third in yellow or now light blue, and fourth uh, posterior sacral foramen. Lastly, there are these sacral ala and these superior articular processes. And what you can observe here, this is the sacral hiatus, which you can observe also superiorly as the sacral canal. And the coccyx are 
four fused vertebrae and if you notice the most inferior vertebrae are smaller in size in comparison with the most superior vertebrae on the coccyx. Now in this model you can also see how the vertebrae articulate with the ribs, particularly the thoracic vertebrae. Now on this anterior view you can see how the ribs articulate anteriorly with the sternum and the first seven ribs are going to be attached almost directly to the sternum. That's also the reason why they are known as the true ribs. Okay, so again, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. From the seventh down, right, the eighth, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, these, car these ribs are also attached with the cartilage, but you notice how they are more distal in regards to the sternum. That's one of the reasons why they are known as the false ribs. It's not that it is a false tissue. And then the last two ribs, 11 and 12, they have no cartilage attaching them to the sternum. And the sternum is the chest bone and it has three parts. The superior part is called the manubrium. And you can actually palpate it on this area of your chest. The middle part is known as the body of the sternum and the most inferior part is the siphoid process. At the top we have this line right here called the sternal angle. This right here is the jugular notch and there's also a clavicular notch and on the sides or laterally we have these facets that allow the costal cartilage to attach with the sternum. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you can feel free to leave them on the comment section below. You can see how... Adam, <laughs> me and